Hey everybody, Ryan F. MTG here, and today we are talking about the brand new card set that just got released in Teppin earlier today, and that's called the Force Seekers. I do want to talk about the new mechanic or the new gimmick of this set called Ascended. Now, Ascended is kind of like Explore or Growth. You know, creatures have Ascend and they get the Ascended status once you achieve it. And they usually either get pump stats or they deal damage or they even kill a unit. You know, each one has a different theme. And how you get a unit to get the Ascended status is you basically have to sacrifice a unit. So let's say you play, you have Guy on the battlefield and you want to play Ed and get the Ascended bonus of plus one plus two, you have to play Ed over Guy and Guy dies. So really, especially in red, some of these could be really good because we play a lot of red creatures that have great enter the battlefield effects, AKA ETB effects of, you know, BB Hood dealing damage or lower ones like Slime, you know, dealing damage. So if you're playing these units to ha get the ETB of dealing damage, well, then you can play a send creature over it once it dealt the damage and maybe once it like took a couple hits with another unit and then you play ed or a different a ascend creature over it to sacrifice it and then getting more value off of that already used card now sacrificing a card just to get a pump status or to do something with ascended creatures is a big task right you you're kind of throwing away a card that's why i think it's very important to think of hey, what did my BB hood already do? What did my unit already do that I'm sacrificing it? Or like with revenge zombies of like, oh, well I can sacrifice it now and it will come back later. And then also of the Eds, all the uh, cards with Ascended, what am I getting out of it? Are the pump stats worth it? Are the new ETB or destroy creatures worth it? And I think you'll find a happy medium. And I think Ascended overall will be a very powerful mechanic. Once you kind of find that happy medium of here is my fodder, my Ascend fodder, and then here are my Ascend payoffs. Now, a lot of the red cards are kind of in two camps. A lot are more of the traditional Ryu Hadoken list of, you know, ETB or one dies triggers of dealing damage to either one unit or random units, something like that. Or a lot are more the Wrath Awoken camp of red decks of, you know, pumping up a big creature or a combo creature or sometimes even agility. So there's kind of two ways and both of the red, the new red cards are using the Ascended mechanic. So it's kind of fun that they don't all go into one home. They can kind of go into two homes. So you'll see me like talking about these red cards of like, oh, this seems more like Ryu Hadoken or more like a Wrath. That doesn't mean it just fits in that deck. It's just kind of more the style. First up is Guy. This is definitely the fodder or the food for Ascended because you want to sacrifice this, right? A 3 MP for a 2-1 is not good. However, this has the death trigger of, you know, giving plus 2 to a random friendly unit, which is like pretty good. That's like a pump spell. So yes, you know, this still does the plus two attack if this dies, it does not need to be ascended, but you really want to ascend this. However, even with ascending this and even the, thinking of this as food, I don't think this card's good enough because just plus two attack is pretty low. That's not great. There's pump spells that definitely do that or do that way better for three MP or less, as well as a two one body is so weak. So I think Guy is a pass for me. Ed, on the other hand, I kind of like this unit and this is more the ascended payoff, right? This is a combo creature with ascend of plus one plus two. Base level stats of a 1-5 is fine, not great. However, if you can ascend this and plus one, plus two, that's pretty good. It also, it's just for three MP. So putting this more in a rush down, beat down, Wrath Awoken pump spell deck, I think is pretty good. Cause even if you cannot ascend this, you can still play this in a deck that you have pump spells to pump this up and just for three MP is pretty low. So I think this card is pretty good. I now, Mega Tortoise does not necessarily want to die or be ascended on. You know, you can do that and that's fine. However, it wants to see its other friends die and the, your other units die because once it sees another unit die, a friendly unit, it deals three damage split among enemy units. That's actually kind of nice. That's like the old monsters from previous set that are usually like four MP that deal three damage across the board, you know, randomly or to one enemy unit. So... Mega Tortoise is cool. I like it. It's kind of almost like something that you just want to like sit in one lane and do other things in the other lanes of, you know, trading off creatures or ascending creatures. And I think this is a good card. 
I just don't feel like it's actually going to find a home because it's good, but it doesn't have initial impact on the game or on the board. And that's usually what I'm looking for because this can die without doing any value. And that's usually pretty unacceptable. Blizzard, I actually think is a pretty powerful card. And this is another food for Ascended. And having a 2-5 body, you know, this can take a couple hits and be just fine. And then you can Ascend after it takes a couple hits, you know, when the HP goes to, you know, 2 or 1. However, you explore for a Halt spell. Halt spells are good. However, Red doesn't usually have a way to abuse Halt or anything like that. You know, it's not a purple deck, but Halt is still good. However, I don't love Blizzard because I would rather play Fodder for my Ascend or just like regular bodies that all deal damage to the opponent's units. So I think this card is good, but yet again, I don't really feel like it's going to be fitting in my like Hadoken lists or anything like that. Now, Blade definitely fits more in the Wrath, the Pump, the Beatdown Red decks. You know, it has Agility and Ascend plus two attack. Agility is nice because if this gets Ascended, it's a 3-7 with Agility. Just for 4 MP, that actually hits pretty hard. Also, kind of like with Ed, you're probably going to be playing this with a deck with a lot of other pump spells. So I could see this being like that full, that, that you know, just curve filler creature. I don't think this is as powerful as Ed, especially it being 4 MP and not 3 MP. However, I think it's good and I definitely wouldn't mind playing around with it. The next one is this little monster. It's just a 4 MP for a 3 4. That doesn't seem that exciting. However, you explore for a 1 MP 2 2 that can get, you know, become a 3 2 if a 4 HP or less unit is on the field. This is kind of nice because it's, you know, something that brings a friend with it. Also, it can be food for Ascended. However, I don't think I'm going to be this desperate for it. I think this is cool and I kind of like the gimmick of like, oh, you play a unit and you kind of get another unit in your EX pocket. I think that's cool. However, I don't particularly like this because I want my units to be like ETB killing something or becoming a heavy hitter where this isn't killing something, it could trade for something and it's not going to be like my win con. So I'll kind of pass on this little monster. Now, Spiral Pegasus is a unit that I really, really like. 4 MP for a 2-4. That's kind of up there with the stats of a lot of the monsters that traditional Hadoken Ryu lists play. So that's good. It also has an ETB of 2 damage to the unit in front. That's not great. Usually for 4 MP, you're usually getting 3 damage. So 2 is a little bit less. However, you know exactly where it's going because it's in front. So it's kind of like the axle besides of its 2. But Ascended, it deals 4 damage split among enemy units. That's really good. That's a little bit higher than usually you get three damage. And I believe if you ascend this, you get both of the one played and the ascended trigger. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. So if I am, then my, my liking of the Pegasus definitely goes down. But if you do indeed get both, I think this is so good. Because if you ascend this, it's dealing two damage and then four damage. And that's f really, really good ETB triggers for, you know, a fine body that you're, you're happy playing in a Ryu Hadoken list. So this is another card that I actually really like. It's four MP for a one seven. That's a really big body. Yes, it doesn't hit hard, but it's a really big body that your opponent kind of has to deal with and it will soak up a lot of, you know, if you're in a Ryu mirror match, it'll soak up a lot of uh, ETB, BB hood effects and stuff. And when played, if a friendly unit has had the ascendant status at least once this battle, deals four damage split among enemy units, four damage is a little bit higher than usually what you get for four MP. Like I said, usually four MP, you get three damage. Four damage is higher, right? It's not crazy higher. However, you just need one Ascended. So I don't know if you can really play three of this card. This might be a one or two of, because you definitely do wa always want to be able to trigger this. And you know, there is a couple hoops to jump through. It's not hard to just get one Ascended trigger, but you definitely need to make sure that you're playing enough Ascended units. Steve Burnside, this card looks fun. I definitely want to brew with this. And this definitely goes much more into the Wrath of Woken or the Beatdown Rushdown Red decks because it's a 4 MP for a 2-5 with combo. Right there, that's good, but nothing too exciting. However, if this has the Ascended status, it gets gains attacking, deals three damage to a random enemy unit. So it be kind of becomes one of the 4 MP monsters on a stick that can trigger multiple times, especially if you can give this flight 
And then even like if you're playing green, give it shield so it's harder to deal with. It could be if you're getting a couple triggers off of this and then also you're hitting pretty hard because it has combo. This makes actually Steve Burnside pretty good looking to me. This definitely does need to, it's almost a build around. It's not just like, oh, this is a good card. This will be thrown in any deck. This is definitely a build around, but it's kind of our, a build around of, you know, doing other combo agility creatures plus pump spell. So overall, I kind of like this card. It could be a little bit worse than I think it is, but I definitely want to brew with him. Goken is just a beater and an anti-ascended card. Basically, it gets plus two, plus two if the unit in front has the ascended status. That's cool. I like that. But for a 5 MP card that's a 2-8, to be fair, a 5 MP 2-8 is nothing bad, but you're not getting any ETB triggers or death triggers or anything. So that's nothing great. But if it does get the plus 2 plus 2, it becomes a 4-10. That's actually kind of good. That's a heavy hitter. However, you could play against a deck with zero ascended creatures in it. But I think right now this could be a better card because I think more people are playing with the shiny new toys from the new set. But overall, I'm, I'm a little, I don't think this card is bad, but I'm a little just like, yeah, this card is cool. I like that anti-ascended hate that it brings, but I don't think it's really worth playing, especially for 5 MP. That's usually not something on the curve that red decks want to fill. The new Ryu, I kind of like this. It's one plate, it deals three damage to one random enemy unit. So that is kind of like the monsters, you know. Usually you get that for four MP and this is five MP. However, this is a two eight body, kind of like what Goken was of like, oh, that body is kind of good and you can pump it up. However, this does three damage. That's really good for this big of a body. Now, if you ascend, it turns into evil Ryu. The difference is that it's a four eight, not a two eight. However, after dealing damage to an enemy unit, you remove two cards from your deck. So that is a downside. It's not an upside. That's a downside. However, I don't know how big of a downside that is. There are some grindy, grindy games, especially in like sometimes the Ryu Mirror match, where maybe it can come down to decking. But usually decking is not a concern. And getting a 4-8 that also RA dealt 3 to something is pretty good. Overall, I like Ryu. I don't think it's like, oh my god, this is a uh, amazing, amazing card, but like, it's a big body. It has a good effect. Yes, it has a downside, but that downside's not terrible. So this is definitely a card that I'm going to be playing around in my red decks and kind of seeing how it plays because I'm pretty excited. And also, this art, love it. And I, I hope, I hope I open up a skin of this so when I'm playing this card, I can have the Evil Ryu skin on. I know I've said this in the past, but this is definitely a card that I think will be cool in the more Wrath beatdown red decks because it's 5 MP for a 2-5 with Flight, Rush, Agility. This hits hard and has Evasion. Yes, it is only a 2-5 five for 5, so that's not a great rate, but with those three keywords, this hits hard and a lot. So then if you can give this, you know, pump its stats, it's hitting harder and harder and harder. So I think this is actually going to be a pretty fun card to play around with with some more rush down beat down strategies. Now on her front half, Lucia doesn't seem too great by any means. You know, five MP for one seven, it's like, well, I'm not going to play that. It has no keywords. However, it has resonate, which is kind of weird. That's usually more of a purple mechanic. I don't think Red's had a resonate card. This is much more like Devil Hunter Dante or something. It flips. So once you play a action spell, it flips into demon form Lucia. This card is a house in and of itself, kind of like Devil Hunter Dante. So it's a 2-6, which is like, okay, that's not the biggest body, but it has flight and agility. That means it's going to be hitting kind of hard and kind of fast. And then attacking, it deals three damage split among enemy units. So it's kind of like one of those usually four MP monsters on a stick. It has flight, so it has evasion. So hopefully it will be attacking more also has agility so it attacks a lot faster and a lot more often overall i think this is really good and i could see this actually going into both the more etb deal damage type control -y decks or the beatdown decks as well so overall i think this legendary is a powerhouse kind of like most legendaries are just very very good i like this one and i think it's kind of a cool flavor like devil hunter dante you know she flips with resonate and just becomes a bigger powerful unit 
Now, Falk is an interesting one. When played, it deals one damage to the unit in front. That's not too good. That's what Axel does, and this is six MP, so that's a lot more than Axel. However, if this is ascended, it deals damage to all enemy units uh, for each time friendly red units have had ascended status. That is so powerful because it's dealing, you know, if you've ascended five times, it deals five damage to each and every unit your opponent has. This can be a wrath right like lady is really really good it's very expensive so not everyone plays lady but lady is really good but that has an etb of six split across the board so it might do you know two 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 this would do five 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 that's really really good however you need to make sure your ascended count is high enough therefore playing enough ascended units to make this worth it because if you're only playing three ascended units well that means the best case scenario is that this does three but the worst case scenario is how many times will you draw this before any of your ascended units? So as long as you're playing quite a lot of ascended units, and this card almost makes me want to play the subpar and mediocre ascended units to really try to enable Falk to be able to have five or more every time this is ascended. So this is definitely almost like a grizzled veteran of a very build around. You want to make sure that the X of Ascended count is high enough, such as you wanted to make the growth was high enough with Grizzle Veteran. But if you can do that, this is a super powerful card. Now we just have a big monster of the set, 6 MP for a 2-9. That's actually a pretty, like, pretty hefty stats for red. A lot of these units have been pretty hefty stats, but that doesn't seem great. No, no ETB, no, nothing like that. But Victory, you explore for Hellflare. This card deals four damage to all enemy units. That's really good. That's kind of like Falk, right? However, this needs to kill something. Victory can be a little hard to maneuver. Usually your best case scenario is dropping this right before a, your enemy unit hits you to like eat it up, but it only has two attack. So I do feel like this monster is pretty situational and we've seen other big monsters that you know gain supernova and stuff like that when it gets victory, but I've always found victory to be a little hard to enable, even though usually the payoffs are very good. But this is probably a monster that I'm going to pass on. However, you know, if you can enable this and maybe you kind of build your deck around playing this and enabling to get the Hellfare and victory stuff, then I think you can, but this is probably a pass for me for right now. Now the last unit of the set for red is Magma Dragoon. This is a 6 MP for a 2-7 with a slew of words. It has Heavy Pierce, Anti-Air, Agility. It also has Ascend, plus 3 attack, gets Shield, and gains Death, deals damage to your hero equal to its attack. So that part is not good, but overall the Ascended is very good. This card hits hard. Like, if you can ascend this, this has Heavy Pierce, Anti-Hair, Agility, Shield, plus it's a 5-7 with all those things. So this definitely fits into the more Pump Spell, Wrath Awoken type deck that I've talked about before. And this is so good. Like, this is a great, great finisher. However, it is 6 MP. A lot of times those decks like to play green for Heavy Fix Chun-Li, the MP, Ramp, Irises, those types of things. So this cannot fit in that because you're capped at 5 MP for two color decks. So with this set, I wonder if this is good enough. Also, if there's just more curve fillers and playable cards, that maybe there can be more of a mono red Wrath Awoken list or other pump spell. You know, it does, it, Blazing Wall doesn't have to be Wrath Awoken, but other more beatdown centric red decks that are not splashing green. Those decks have kind of existed in the past, but usually the green kind of overtakes it a little bit. However, this card is really good. Yes, there is a downside, and yes, you will probably lose games to, you know, dealing yourself 10 because you've pumped this up so much and then they, you know, kill it somehow. However, I think more times you will be winning the game through this than losing the game. So overall, this is a really good card. However, the almost the worst part about it is the 6 MP because you cannot splash it in a green deck. But, you know, maybe that's fine. Maybe maybe those days are behind us. Okay, time for the actions. Catalyst is the first red action. This is 1 MP, so it's super cheap, also super free if you're doing this in response to something. And it basically gives one unit plus one for each time your units have ascended in this game. That can be a lot. You know, this is kind of like state of nothingness in a way, but for ascend, not actions. So you definitely need to make sure you are playing enough ascend 
I, I know I've said this to, uh, ad nauseum and I probably will keep saying it, in order to make sure that this count is high enough. Because guess what? You can play action spells for one or two MP for very cheap that give you plus one, plus two, and so on. So you wanna make sure this is definitely more than two, right? If this is for three, that's pretty good. However, you definitely need to be playing this in a deck that one, wants a big creature, so probably with combo agility flight, more of the beatdown red decks rather than the Ryu red decks, as well as can you get that ascended count high? And if you can, I think this is good. You don't want tons of them because this can definitely have a lot of dead hands because it's not dead of like, oh, this is an action spell and I don't have creatures. It can also be dead of like, I haven't ascended any units yet and this is doesn't pump anything because it's plus one attack for each time you've ascended there's no basis zero so i think this is definitely some hoops to jump through but good overall if you can jump through those hoops hado strike is a fun card i think it's good also it's just kind of fun of teppin's a digital game they know their digital game and they can do stuff so basically this deals one damage to enemy units if you've ascended status at least once this battle, it deals five damage. So that's actually really, really good. Cause if you are playing, so, and also just one is not a lot. So as long as you're playing a couple ascend units, this a lot of the times will be five damage. That's really good. That's way above rate. Usually like the best rate we kind of see excluding legendaries, right? Is like two MP dealing four damage. This is five, that's a lot higher. One stinks, but hey, you just ascend once and you're good. However, there is a downside. Once this resolves, you shuffle this Hado Strike into your opponent's deck. So that means they can draw it. They don't draw it right away. It doesn't go to their EX pocket, so they do have to draw it, right? But that's kind of cool. That's definitely something you really only would do in a digital game. And I think that's cool. It's kind of wonky and weird of like, wait, I'm giving them a uh, action card to play. However, yeah, because this card is good, so there should be a downside. And you would be like, well, that's terrible, because then they just get to do five damage to my units as well, too. Maybe they're not playing Ascend deck. What if they have zero Ascend units, or not that many, so they do have not Ascended once, and they draw this, if it's only dealing one damage, this is kind of a waste of a draw. However, if Ascend becomes very popular, a lot of mirrors, and the new toy to play around with, well, then it's dealing five but they do have to draw it. So I think this uh, could be a double-edged sword or sometimes could be great because if they're not playing Ascend creatures, this is a dead draw. So overall, I think this card is pretty darn good and also just pretty fun too. Yen Power Awakened, I don't think this card is that good. I think it's just a worse Hado Strike and it's common, so I think it is just a worse one. It deals two damage to an enemy unit. However, if a friendly unit with Ascend status is on the field, so it has to be on the field, not triggered throughout the game, it will deal four additional damage. It does say additional, so that is six damage. However, this is for three MP. Hado Strike is two MP. It's also doing five damage and there's less hoops to jump through because the unit doesn't have to be on the board, where this just seems more hoops to jump through and a lot more times this is going to be dead. And at best case scenario, this is just one more damage. Yes, worst case scenario, this is two compared to one. And yes, you're not giving your opponent a card. However, I'm not that impressed with this. I really, really like my red actions to be two or less. So they're free when you're doing it in response to something. Yes, three is not that much more than two. But overall, I'm not impressed with this card. This Full Power Punch is another interesting kind of weird card. So what it does is it's three MP for an action. It deals damage to an enemy unit equal to twice the remaining MP, AMP is included, of you to a enemy unit. After this resolves, your MP goes down to zero. That's a big cost because it's almost like this is not necessarily th just three MP because if you play this with three, and then they do something in response, well then this is doing two damage twice, so four damage. That's good, not great. However, this could really do, like if you have a full bar, you play this, let's say they don't do anything in response, that's seven MP you have, that means it's doing 14. So this could be a way to really kill something big, like a big Ibuki that's kind of gone crazy and haywire, 
However, it's kind of depleting your whole MP gauge. So thinking of this as a 3 MP card is a little wrong, because yes it is, but you kind of want to make sure you're having enough MP. You don't have to have tons, because twice you could have 4 MP and it's twice, so that's 8 damage, that's a lot. But it's depleting everything. I'm a little unsure about this card. I do think it's powerful, but man does it come at a big, big cost. Unwavering Blade is 3 MP, it gives a friendly unit agility, and if you've ascended 3 or more times, it also gives that unit plus 1 plus 1 and deals 3 damage split among enemy units. That's kind of a lot. Agility is good on units, right? Especially if you're more the beatdown, rushdown, you know, you have a combo creature, some flight creatures with evasion, giving stuff agility is good. 3 MP is kind of a lot for that. However, if you can have the send be 3 or higher, giving plus 1 plus 1 is good. And then dealing three damage is good. Like that's a lot of pretty good, pretty good, pretty good to kind of make this package that's like, oh, this is a pretty good card. However, like I've said before, you need to make sure that your send count can always be three because this could be very awkward if you're playing this card and it's in your opening hand because you don't really want to play this. You don't want to spend three MP just to give a unit agility. That's not the worst thing. It's not completely dead, but it's definitely not efficient or worth it. My first hesitation with this card is I don't think it's worth it overall. I think it's good, but it's a little too cute and there's too many hoops to jump through to really make this a heavy hitter in even the more Wrath beatdown red decks. And I Now, Disloyal Follower is a legendary, so it's probably like, okay, this is probably going to be a good card. And it is. It's 3 MP, so pretty cheap action. It deals damage to an enemy unit triple the number of times friendly units have ascended status during this battle. Triple is a lot. So that means if you've just ascended once, it deals three. Yes, three damage is not tons. It might not kill a unit. So you kind of want to make sure your ascended count is a little higher, but just even having two, that's six. Three is nine. You, you see where this is going. It's triple. This card can do crazy amounts of damage. Of course, shield, you know, if they shield something in response, it's kind of like, oh, well, that stinks. You know, I was going to deal 12 damage. But having triple seems so, so powerful. So that seems pretty good and fun in and of itself. Also, there's more, and it's not a downside. A lot of these cards might have like a downside, right? Nope, this is another upside. And that enemy unit dies. Keep it in your EX pocket instead of sending it to the graveyard. So that means if you kill a unit with this, you get that unit. It goes to your EX pocket and you can play it later. That's awesome because people usually play good units. You can also target and make sure be like, okay, that unit's not worth it. I want to kill that big unit. I want to kill that Chun-Li, which doesn't have tons of power so I can kill it. And then I get my own Chun-Li in a red deck that usually doesn't play it. Yes, sometimes you kill a creature that you don't really want to play, that's fine because it will just chill in your EX pocket and that's okay. You don't need to play it. There's no downside of leaving it in there. But if you're getting a good unit, that's just so upside. There's no downside to this card. Yes, the down I guess there's a little downside of you need to make sure your ascend count is high enough. However, it being triple the amount means that your ascend count does not need to be that high in order to actually kill something. So overall, I think this card is fantastic and definitely will be you played in a lot of red decks. Yes, not every single red deck because you need to make sure a sun count is good, but it doesn't, you don't need to be playing 29 a sun cards and this. You can be playing, you know, six or whatever, what have you, and you don't need to be going at the bottom of the barrel for a sun card. So overall, this, this, this card is awesome. Incineration deals one damage to enemy unit. If that unit is not destroyed, deals an additional four damage. So at most this deals five damage. It's kind of cool if like it pokes it and then if it doesn't die, it deals four more. This is a great way to get through shield, right? If they have like an iris or something like that, it pokes it, it destroys that shield and then it would do four. And so it actually, the iris would take four. So that's kind of cool and a unique effect that we haven't really seen in a card, which I like seeing new things. However, it's four MP. That's kind of a lot. So I think if this was cheaper, it might be way too overpowered. I'm not saying it should be cheaper. If this was cheaper, I could definitely see playing it. However, it being 4 MP seems like this is probably going to be sitting on the benches and not seen that much. Wicked Flames of Hatred is <laughs> a wonky card. Basically, it's 4 MP for an action. 
you pick a enemy unit and you then after you know picking that enemy unit you shuffle your ex pocket and hand so if you only have your hand it's five cards if stuff is in your ex pocket it could be seven cards into your deck and then you draw five new cards then after you draw five cards you damage the selected enemy unit to the number of unit cards the player returned to the deck will be dealt to the selected enemy unit. So this is cool. I'm not sure how good it is because let's say your EX pocket is full. You have five cards in hand, two cards in your EX pocket. That's seven cards. If all seven cards are unit cards, that means it's dealing seven damage to the enemy unit. That's pretty good. However, if you have nothing in your EX pocket and five cards, that would be five if all of them are units. However, we're talking about best case scenario. Most of your hands are not all units. Even if you have stuff in your EX pocket, you usually have some action spells. In some more heavy ETB units with BB hoods and slimes and all those, there's a lot of units. However, it's not always going to be five. It's not always going to be seven. This could be like four. Yes, if you don't like your hand, this could be like a free mulligan and then draw more units while still dealing damage to something. So I think the effect is definitely not terrible, but it's a little RNG for my liking and it's 4 MP. So it's 4 MP for something that at most can deal 7 damage and at least, yeah, you're probably never going to have 0 units in your hand, but it could do, you know, 2 or 3 that seems a bit much. 4 MP for this RNG card, I'm not playing this card. Overall, Reddit got some brand new toys that I'm pretty excited to start brewing with. The Ascend in Red, there's a lot of Ascend either payoffs or enablers that seem good in it of themselves and putting them together in a deck that cares about Ascend seems really powerful. So I'm kind of excited to see where Yo, Ryu and Rathalos kind of go with these new toys. Will Ascend kind of dominate or will it kind of be like growth where like some people are doing like Ryu growths, not everyone was. Overall, I like Red a lot in Teppen and I like these cards. There are some really, really powerful cards, definitely some not so powerful cards, but overall, I think Red got some new toys and I'm excited to play with them. I will be uh, talking about the green cards next in a, another video, but thanks for all for watching and I'll see you all later.